Hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Anthony. This is the VR Game Rankings YouTube channel and you probably were expecting the weekend wrap up where I cover all of the biggest news stories of the week once a week on the weekend. We call it the weekend wrap up. Pretty good name, right? Well, this isn't that. You see what happened earlier today. I was doing some show prep for the weekend wrap up trying to see exactly what news stories I would be covering on the show and one of the news stories I wanted to get into is Magic Leap. Yeah, there's a lot of big information that came out this week regarding Magic Leap and that was going to be a major segment of the weekend wrap up and what I found was I was taking notes from a video that Magic Leap posted on Twitch. It was actually a live stream on Twitch where a lot of this information came out. I was taking notes to make sure that I would cover some of the biggest things that were revealed in this talk. And you know what? It became very obvious to me very quickly that there's just too much Magic Leap information, just too much good stuff to contain in a segment of the weekend wrap up. So this isn't the weekend wrap up. This is another special episode and this episode is absolutely dedicated to Magic Leap and Magic Leap 1 Creators Edition. It is going to release later this year. That has been confirmed by Roni Abovitz on Twitter very recently. He confirmed that absolutely this product will ship in the year 2018 and we found out a lot of new information about this product and so what i'm going to do on this episode today is i'm going to basically go over all of that information and kind of give you my reaction to all of the interesting things that came up in this talk so what discussion am i talking about here i'm talking about this live twitch stream that magic leap does i believe they do this every single month i think it's like the first tuesday of every month or first Wednesday of every month or whatever it is, but they have something called Magic Leap Live. And that's where they kind of do this little live show. It is hosted by Alan Noon. He is the senior technical artist learning resources for Magic Leap. He is basically the host of the show. And occasionally he will have a guest on and they will talk about various Magic Leap related issues more so specifically to developers that are trying to get content ready they're working on magic leap related software even though they don't know all the all the details of the magic leap headset they don't know everything about it we still don't know what the field of view is we still don't know exactly what processor is driving the experience we don't know a lot of stuff about this but Developers are still working right now as I speak on Magic Leap related software. There is a simulation program that they can run their software through that can kind of give them a bit of some basics. And then when they get all the final information, they'll be able to dial their experiences in a hell of a lot better. But that's what this Magic Leap Live is all about. They're trying to kind of help out developers and creators get up to speed with developing Magic Leap stuff. But we also might find out some real interesting information about Magic Leap 1 Creators Edition as we move closer and closer to a potential launch of this product a little bit later this year. Okay, so this particular episode that I'm going to do today, I'm going to be straight up and admit that I am going to be looking at my notes quite a bit. And the reason why is normally I try to come off the top of my head and basically try to remember things off the fly, maybe glance at a note here or there, kind of remind me of something. But I typically try to come off the top of my head. I think it's a better presentation to do it that way. But the reality with this particular episode, there's just so many little details that I got to get into that I can't come off the top of my head with everything. I'm going to forget about some stuff. So you are going to see my eyes dart over in this direction where I have my notes. That's going to happen quite a bit during this episode. And the only thing I'll say is, you know, please understand why that's the case for this episode, but it's I'm trying to get a lot of information out there and I want to give my reaction on a lot of this information. And I think this is just the best way to do it. So that's basically how we're going to go ahead and do it today. OK, so what happened earlier this week, I believe I think this was Tuesday. 
I think this was Tuesday, Alan Noon, of course, hosted Magic Leap Live on Twitch, and he did have a special guest. And the special guest was Shayna D. Ellis, the senior technical marketing manager for Magic Leap. Now, what she does is she leads the demo team at Magic Leap, and her team is responsible for demoing Magic Leap 1 to investors, vendors, candidates, basically anybody that needs to understand what this Magic Leap product is all about. And she said that she's done like thousands of demos of Magic Leap over you know the last couple of years or whatever. And so she has a lot of experience in this regard. So she was the special guest on this show. And the reason this is important is because at a certain point, they actually have a Magic Leap One Creators Edition. They have the hardware sitting right there. They have the Lightware headset. They have the Light Pack, which has the actual processing power. And they have the controller device as well. And so everything is right there. And she kind of demonstrates herself putting it on and, and all of the various features of it. And that's really what we, want, what we want to get into here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at this list of information here and we're just going to go down the list and just cover everything that was revealed. Okay. So one of the first things that, um, one of the things that she talked about is obviously there are a lot of sensors. There are cameras, there are sensors. There's a lot of little things on the front of the Magic Leap Lightwear that you put on your head. A lot of little sensors that you can see on the front. And one of those sensors is an LED indicator. And so this particular LED indicator, if you turn the device on, it's an indicator that lets you know that the device is on and it's powered, it's operational. That's part of it. But another part of this LED indicator is it's also going to show if you are recording audio or video. Yeah, see the thing about Magic Leap, we might get into some more problems uh, from a standpoint of recording people and, and whether or not people are like, hey, I didn't know I was being recorded and all of that kind of stuff. Now, we're not going to see Magic Leap at the local bar, you know, on Saturday night. I don't think you're going to have people walking around wearing Magic Leaps in a bar environment recording everybody, although who knows what might happen. But basically this little LED indicator on the front is going to light up with different colors, letting people know that it would let somebody standing on the outside know, oh, this guy is recording video. This guy is recording audio. Now, she didn't specify what kind of light would light up to indicate this. I'm guessing if a red light lit up, you'd kind of think, oh, that's a camera recording because that's typically what we think about with a little red light on a device acting up. It's usually a camera that is recording. And then if it's just audio that's recording, I don't know, maybe it'll be a blue light. Who knows? But anywhere, anyway, we do have this LED indicator. Um, the, the only thing I really have to say about all of this is, again, this privacy thing. This was something that Google Glass dealt with when that came out. And it really was one of the main things that kind of killed Google Glass, I think. And Intel, when they came out with their Vaunt smart glasses, which unfortunately died an incredibly early death. I mean, that was just a bizarre situation right there. But Intel was very, very specific about the fact that there is no cameras on their device. They're not recording anything. That was like a really big deal to them. And here's Magic Leap. They're kind of ignoring this. They're pretty much forgetting about the this recording issue this privacy issue i think part of the reason that they're doing this is because this is going to be a very expensive device and they want to have as many unique features that could be considered great features to have as possible and a feature of being able to record everything you look at that is something that some people would like to have for different reasons and so they're basically going to throw the kitchen sink at it, uh, so to speak. So that's what I kind of think about these indicate this indicator light situation on the front. Another thing that she mentioned is that there is a world camera on the device. And I don't know exactly what she means by world camera, but I'm guessing there's basically a camera where you can take pictures of anything that you're looking at. That's pretty obvious as well. So video, still images, and actual audio can be recorded off of the Lightwear device. 
Okay, as she talked more about the Lightwear device that you put on your head, the headset for Magic Leap, she showed the speakers that are built into the headband and that these speakers, they're basically built into the sides. And so you, you put the Magic Leap on your head and it kind of goes up and around, back over, up on your crown like this. And at a certain point, the speakers are basically embedded into the side of the frame. And one of the slight issues here with this could be the fact, well, everybody has a different size head. People's eyes and their ears are located in, sight, in slightly different positions. So you got to wonder, I'm sure Magic Leap, what they did was they looked at a, a ton of different head sizes and they kind of averaged out the, the distance between somebody's eyeball and their ears. And, and so they probably came up with an average and that's where they decided to put the speakers but it could be a bit of a concern. You put this thing on your head with Oculus, you know, it has the headphones that you can tilt this way, you can tilt that way, you can kind of move it around and adjust it up a little bit, adjust it down a little bit. That is very convenient. This, there's no adjustment. It is built into the band. So you got to hope that whichever Magic Leap headset you get, you got to hope that those speakers are dialed in relatively close to where your ears are. That could be a slight bit of a problem. Now, one of the things that we did find out, though, that we never knew about before is there is an auxiliary jack that is on the light pack. Now, what is the light pack? The light pack is the little hockey puck device that you clip onto your pants pocket. And that basically has all of the innards for the computer, the GPU, the CPU. But there's also a little auxiliary plug on it where you could actually run wired headphones to it. So you could potentially bypass the speakers that are built into the Magic Leap 1. So it's a good thing that we know about this. Now, one of the questions, too, though, is like, well, let's say you have some really high end uh, Sennheiser headphones that are you know really good like 200 300 pair of sennheiser headphones you'd rather use those than the built-in speakers as good as they may be into the the actual uh headset of magic leap one the question is going to be is it going to be comfortable at all to wear the headphones over on top of having that magic leap frame there and that's something that anybody that has a playstation vr and uses their headphones with the PlayStation VR, you know that that can be a slight issue. The band that wraps around your headphones kind of have to go outside of that. And sometimes that can be an issue as well. So that's something we'll kind of have to keep our eyes on as far as that goes. Okay, there's a USB-C port that is on the front of the light pack, which again, this is the little hockey puck device that has the computer uh, well, the CPU, GPU, and all of that, the computer innards are in there in the light pack. A little USB-C plug is on the front of there. And the and Shana, De, Shana D. Ellis was talking about how this can be used for developers. They could have their laptop. They could be working something on their laptop. They can just connect their Magic Leap 1 headset quickly, well, the light pack quickly to their laptop, and they could upload something to the, to the light pack and then check and see does the program work right you know iterate and stuff like that now will that usb-c connector be there when we finally get to a legitimate consumer version of the product i don't know but she also mentioned it's used for charging so they're obviously going to have some kind of way to charge it whether or not it will also allow for uploading of videos or other things that you get maybe from somewhere else that is questionable we don't know about that Okay, so now let's get into the controller part of it. Let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit here, looking at all my controller notes. Okay, so she did take out the controller and looked at the controller and kind of talked about some of the functionality of the controller. And this is huge because this is the input device for Magic Leap 1 Creators Edition. This is what we're going to deal with, folks. And it is a single controller. There isn't two controllers. Now, one of the best bits of information we found out, because this wasn't absolutely confirmed prior, but the controller is six degrees of freedom. So we have a legit six degrees of freedom controller. That is a good thing. The controller has a power button that is right on the front of it, right below the touchpad. And this power button will, well, it will turn on the controller, but it also operates very similar 
to the home button that you would have on, say, an iPhone or an Android device. So very similar to a home button on a cell phone. So that is going to be used a tremendous amount, I would have to imagine. And that, and she also mentioned that the touchpad is going to have little LED sensors that will kind of help you know where to hit on the touchpad. Now, what I wasn't sure about the LED sensors that she was talking about is are the LED sensors like located physically underneath the touchpad and they kind of light up and somebody like if I'm holding this controller to somebody standing over there, they're going to actually see these LED sensors or is she talking about when you're actually wearing the device and you look at the controller, it's going to show little LED sensors, but only the person wearing the device would actually see it. Not so sure about that, but it does, the touchpad does have these LED sensors that should help you know where to click on the touchpad because the touchpad is basically going to be used as a lot of buttons as well because there's a limited number of buttons on this thing. There aren't a ton of them. Okay, there is a bumper button and there is also a trigger on the underside of the controller as well. And I already mentioned that there is six degrees of freedom in the controller and the controller does feature haptic feedback as well. The controller is tracked by the headset. In fact, when you're looking at the uh, the Magic Leap 1 light, light wear, the thing that you wear in your head, you'll see this little box, this little box that is over on the right side. And I was kind of wondering, what the heck is this little box over there? It's actually some type of antenna device Apparently, it is an antenna that is used for part of the six degrees of freedom that the controller is going to feature. So that is what that little box is there. So that's basically everything that I had to talk about in relationship to the controller for Magic Leap 1. But one of the things we have to ask ourselves is, are there enough buttons? Like, is this going to is this going to be a gaming device? Are you going to be able to play a serious game on this thing? That's one of the questions we have to ask because you have a single controller. So you really, you'll notice that that little box that is the antenna or, or whatever it is that's, that's tracking the controller, that there's only one of them and it's on the right side, which normally you're going to have the controller in your right hand because a larger percentage of the population is right-handed. So most people are going to hold it in their right hand and the little box is over on the right side, which is, you know, analyzing its position in space and all of that kind of thing. But it's a single controller, so we're not going to have two hands. We don't know yet. I haven't heard anything specific about eye tracking like what if you didn't even use the controller can you set the controller down on the table and can you actually have your hands is there like some basic leap motion type of thing that's going on here maybe we don't know yet haven't heard anything about that but the lack of buttons is a little bit disturbing i mean we do have the trigger so you can of course have a gun you have the bumper that's a little bit higher so you got another bumper there and then you got the home button but I could see if the home button is used for absolutely everything, I could really see that home button uh, having some problems after a while. So, and then of course, you know, the touchpad, obviously they'll be able to add other buttons to the touchpad um, virtually, you know, within the experience, they'll be able to, to have all these different buttons on the touchpad. But I do wonder a little bit about the controller. I, I really do, whether or not we'll, we'll be able to have like really really meaningful gaming experiences which was such a limited number of buttons so that is the controller okay so now let's get into the lightware so she picked up the lightware and she kind of showed it off a little bit talked about the speakers and everything like that and then she put it on her head and so we got some more information there okay so the lightware one of the things that we saw with this video is the lightware does have some nice padding. It has padding right here in the front for your forehead. They call it the brow pad. And apparently this little brow pad has other options. There's a thinner option um, for comfort. So they're gonna have different versions of that and it pops right out and it just pops right back in. Although when she did try to pop it back in, she didn't pop it back in all the way and it was kind of, uh, akimbo a little bit. I noticed that. I don't know if anybody else 
was watching the video, you might have noticed that as well. And then there's padding all around the back for your crown. You do wear this where this light wear is going to wrap around your eyes like this. It's going to come back and then it's going to go up, up around the top crown of your head. And so there is a lot of padding in the back there, which does remind me a lot of PlayStation VR in terms of how comfortable the PlayStation VR. So it's nice that they have the padding around there. And then also you have the little nose padding here, the little nose pad. She explained that there are going to be a number of different versions of this little nose pad that you can snap into it and snap off of it. And that this is absolutely mission critical because you have to get a really good fit of the device for the eye tracking to work properly. Yes, there is eye tracking that has been confirmed. That's another thing that we have here. But but she did talk about that nose pad for quite a bit, saying it is really critical that you get a proper placement of the Magic Leap 1 when you're putting it on your head. Another thing they talked about is if you wear glasses, you will not be wearing glasses inside the Magic Leap 1, period. That is simply not going to happen but Magic Leap is working with a partner. They have a, a secret partner, basically, that hasn't been revealed up to this point yet. Bosch and Lom or somebody, you know, who knows? I don't know. They have some type of partner that they're working with where they will provide subscription lenses. I mean, you're going to have to pay extra and order these, but there will be prescription lenses that you can get that you pop inside the device, and apparently they easily pop in, they easily pop out. All of that will work great. Don't know how much extra that's going to add to the cost. So anybody that's wearing glasses, that is a bit of an issue. And then it's also an issue from the standpoint of constantly sharing the Magic Leap 1 with other people. If somebody wears glasses, you know, you're not going to know their prescription. You're not going to have that ready for them. So they're basically just going to have to deal with it. So if you're kind of giving demos to friends and family, if they don't wear, I mean, if they wear glasses, it's going to kind of be tough titty situation. They're not going to get a perfect view out of it, but that is the way. It, and, and then also each time you put the Magic Leap 1 on a new person, it's going to have to calibrate for the eye tracking. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue as well in terms of having multiple people use a Magic Leap 1. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what I have on the Lightwear. Okay, so let's get into the Light Pack a little bit. So we did get some additional information about the Light Pack. Now, one of the things that all of us kind of assumed about the Light Pack, I would have to say, is when we first saw this Light Pack, it seemed really obvious that it would just snap on your belt, that if you were wearing a belt on your pants, you just snap the light pack onto there. But we've actually found out that that is not the way this light pack is designed to be used. And I'm talking about this little hockey puck device. What you're actually going to do is you're actually going to slide it into your pocket where the outer portion is going to remain outside of your pants and then the inner portion is going to slide into your pocket. And you want to have it all the way down in your pocket so it is nice and snug. It's not going to fall out. Now, apparently, this will work fine on a pocket on the front of your pants or a pocket on the back of your pants, but that you really need to you really need to put the thing in your pocket. And the other thing that Shanna, De, Shanna D. Ellis talked about is she said, you don't want to stuff this whole entire thing into your pocket. So let's say you have a jacket on or something and you have a big, a big jacket pocket. You don't want to put the entire thing in there because there, this is a computer. You know, this is dissipating heat. This is generating heat. And Shannon D. Ellis, she did mention that the device itself is going to pull uh, cold air from the environment and push out the hot air through the other side, that that's kind of how the system cools itself. And so that outer puck part of it, that needs to be exposed to open air. So you do not want to put it, stuff it all the way down in your pocket. That could create like a fire hazard or it could cause some malfunctioning because the device won't be able to properly cool itself and you don't put it on a belt. Now, what you can do, though, is there will be an optional accessory that I think will probably be included with every single Magic Leap 1 Creator Edition headset where it's going to have a strap that can kind of go over your shoulder and you can clip the light pack onto this shoulder strap. 
if, for example, let's say you're wearing some uh, gym shorts or you have sweats on or, or something that that has no pockets whatsoever, that is going to be an option as well. So that's kind of what we learned about the light pack. Um, now, after this point, we got into this uh, the fact of actually getting the headset on and going through the whole process. What is the process going to be like for a brand new user that is putting on that just got a Magic Leap 1 Creator's Edition? They opened up the box, they took everything out, they want to experience it for the first time. And so what Shana D. Ellis talked about, she talked about the out-of-box experience. And so apparently what you're going to do to turn on the device, there's actually a power button that is going to be on the light pack. You hit the power button and then there is a little LED arc that is on the light pack that is going to slowly start to light up as it goes around this arc and they actually call it the sunrise. And so basically when you're turning on the device for the very first time, it is going to take a number of seconds. It's not going to turn on absolutely immediately. It might take 45 seconds or whatever for the entire process. And so you can kind of watch this little LED arc. You can watch the sunrise on this arc to know when your Magic Leap 1 is ready to go. Okay, so then you put it on your head and basically an intro sequence will boot up at the beginning and it's going to show, you know, Magic Leap and it's probably going to be some really cool intro sequence you would have to imagine. Just kind of like every video game platform that we've ever had, you turn it on, there's a little jingle, there's a logo, you know, that's kind of the deal that that we have a lot of times with, with devices like this. And so it's going to have its own little intro sequence. And then you're going to pair the controller. Now she actually called it the totem, which I think is what their code name was when they were developing all of this. They called it the totem. But you're going to pair your controller and then the Magic Leap 1 headset is going to guide you through getting a proper fit. How to how to put it on your head the right way, where to rest it, kind of how to get the proper fit. And, that, uh, and then you're going to go through an eye calibration setup. And so this is really exciting right here. There is eye tracking, there is eye, eye calibration, so that is a big part of it. This is going to be one of the first mainstream kind of devices that is definitely going to have eye tracking. So this is part of, this is basically the future of VR and AR. Eye tracking is going to be a standard thing. A couple of years from now, we're going to look back at this time and be like, wow, I can't believe we had all these VR headsets that didn't have eye tracking. It is going to be absolutely standard. And this is one of the very first devices that is going to, that is going to feature that. Now it's also, they also talked about Wi-Fi setup and Bluetooth connectivity, how you're going to connect to the internet with this device. And then once everything is up and running, then you get into what's called Magic Leap World. And Magic Leap World is basically their app store. This is the Oculus store. This is Viveport. This is Steam or whatever. You know, this is the store that you're going to get into to download apps and games and anything else that you're going to run on it, they are going to have Magic Leap World. And it's funny, I was watching this, as I was watching this video, I was also occasionally looking at chat, you know, the Twitch chat, and just absolutely hilarious to see everything that everybody's talking about. But when they did mention Magic Leap 1, I saw a number of people in chat kind of mumble and grumble about, oh my God, another walled garden. Here we go. Here's another walled garden. And one of the things that I'll say about this is, yeah, of course there's going to be a walled garden. What the hell do you expect? Do you think you're going to get a Magic Leap 1 and you're going to sign into Steam and start buying stuff on Steam? No, there's going to be a walled garden for every freaking device that comes down the pipe. We're going to have like 30, 40 different accounts 30, 40 different walled gardens for every little device out there. That's the way this game is played. Everybody wants the App Store. Everybody wants to make billions upon billions upon billions of dollars like Apple is doing. Everybody wants what Apple has. Magic Leap wants what Apple has. Oculus wants what Apple has. Valve and Vive and everybody, they all, everybody wants what, what Apple has. There are going to be app stores. There are going to be walled gardens. Deal with it, you know, hashtag deal with it. Um, but basically, yeah, so Magic Leap World will be there. That's where we'll get our games and experiences. Dr. Gordbort's 
invaders and all those kinds of things. All of that will be in Magic Leap World. Okay, so let's go down here, scroll down a little bit more, get some more details that they talked about. Okay, so one of the things she talked about was in actually using the device, she talked about head gestures and different gestures that they have and that some work better than others. And one of the things she mentioned that I remembered was eyes gaze with audio. And so they are doing this eye tracking here. So imagine you're in the magic, you're in Magic Leap world, you're in the store and they have all these different little triangles or circles or whatever they are with different pieces of content. And so your eyes gaze, wherever your eyes looking, Magic Leap 1 knows where you're looking and it's going to highlight whatever box you're looking at. But as you move your eye gaze from one box to another, there's also going to be some audio cues that are going to come along with that. So you'll move your eyes and there'll be like a little ding, 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 or what, a little click or, or something to let you know what you're looking at. And then bam, you can go ahead and select that. So you will have eye gaze with audio to allow you to quickly select things, which that's good. And um, oh, one of the cool things that she talked about, well, she talked about voice control as well. And whenever you hear voice control and voice recognition, I know that we've made a lot of advances in voice recognition over the last couple of years, but what technology is Magic Leap using? Because I know there's some really good voice recognition technology that is out there now, but I don't know that Magic Leap is actually using that. And this is kind of mission critical. How accurate is the voice controls going to be? Are voice controls going to be able to deal with people that have heavy accents and you know they don't speak incredibly clearly? How exactly all of that is going to work? That is mission critical because any of these things could be possible failure points that could really hurt the Magic Leap 1 experience overall if some of these things just don't live up. You know, it's the weakest link type of thing. Whatever the weakest link in the chain is going to hold the whole thing back hopefully the voice control will be up to par. Now, one of the most interesting things of this entire video was she was talking about how they would give demos and in the demos that they would give, there was a little hologram, a little character that was flying around the room and that if you hold out your finger, that the character will recognize the fact that you're holding out your finger and it'll come and it'll hover right over your finger. And apparently this character has heat signatures all underneath it, like it's generating heat. There's little smoke that's coming off of it and all of that. And what she said was one out of five people that experience this demo literally feel a sensation of heat. They literally think their finger is about to get burned and they, they quickly move their finger away and in fact, Alan, uh, what was his name again? I, I, I know his first name was Alan. Let's see. Al, Alan Noon. Okay. Alan Noon mentioned that he was, he was one of the people that was in this situation that had actually happened to him. And that when Shana D. Ellis was giving him this demo, she asked him if he felt that. And he said, no, because he was almost embarrassed by the, but he really did feel that. So you kind of wonder that they, they think one out of five people feel it, but it could be a lot more than that. Just people a little bit too embarrassed to admit, but that kind of shows us the power of how we can manipulate our brain. I mean, that is, we're going to see some really incredible things over the next five to 10 years in terms of learning how our brains process information by all these virtual things that we're going to be putting onto our brain, virtual sounds and all this stuff. We're going to be doing all these kinds of tricks and these tricks are going to help us learn more about how we perceive things and how we process information within our brain. And it's kind of amazing that if a visual signal can be so powerful and if the audio signal that comes along with it is so powerful that it can cause your mind to put two and two together and say, wait, this is real. This is real. You're going to burn your finger. I'm sending a pain signal to your finger to get your finger the hell out of the way because you're going to burn your finger that, that it's overtaking some of our brain capability. I mean, it's, it's fooling our brain. It's, it's literally fooling our brain. That is very impressive. That says a lot for the quality of the images that we're seeing. Like we don't know how good these images are, but based on that kind of information, they got to be pretty damn good because they're doing a great job 
of tricking our brains. Okay, let's see what else did they? Oh, one of the things they talked about too, they're talking to developers and they're talking about best practices for developers, what they should be doing in creating their Magic Leap content. And one of the things they mentioned is they talked about the new Uncanny Valley. And basically what they were trying to say here is that if you have a character in your Magic Leap game or experience, and the character is standing a few feet away from the experiencer, the player, the user, that if that character doesn't react to the user, if it doesn't recognize the user, if it doesn't make some kind of movements to understand that there, you know, there's this other person here and it kind of reacts and plays off this person, that that is the new uncanny valley, basically characters that aren't interacting. And that makes a ton of sense. I can really believe this. And when we get into the AR era with Magic Leap later this year, I think that's something that's going to be pretty obvious. We're going to see a lot of different apps and some of the most successful games and experiences are going to be the ones where these digital characters really seem to react to the things that we're doing. And uh, so that will be interesting as well. They did mention that. Okay, battery life. This is something that some of the people were asking. What is the battery life going to be on this device? Now, they really didn't give us any legit information on this. They basically said what they've already said, which is several hours. Okay, what exactly is several hours? Several could be two, several could be three, several could be four, you know, but I mean, we, we probably want to go downwards there. So several could just be two. This thing might last two hours. We look at the Oculus Go, it lasts two hours. So that could be kind of in the range. It could be two hours, two and a half hours. That could be an issue for long-term use of Magic Leap 1. You know, it kind of sucks that it only works for a limited amount of time. And then can you charge the thing up while still using it? I mean, I'm sure you could if you're just standing in one single spot, but who knows how that's going to work. We'll have to wait and see what that is all about. They also said that the battery life really depends on how much how many holograms or, or digital things they're placing within your real environment. And one of the things she talked about too is that they can completely cover your field, of, whatever the field of view is that this device works, they can basically cover your field of view with all kinds of digital things layered on top, but that it becomes really busy and it kind of overloads the person with too much information. It's almost overkill. And she was kind of talking about best practices that less is more, kind of start off a little bit a little bit more basic, have don't put as many digital things in the world, keep it simple in the beginning, start off slowly. And so if you're an experience where there's only a couple of digital things overlaid within your world, the battery will last a hell of a lot longer than some like really intense experience where they're trying to cover as much of your vision with all kinds of little digital things. So that's part of the battery life as well. Another thing that we heard in this video is that Magic Leap One Creators Edition is basically an indoor device. This device is designed to be used indoors. It is not meant for the great outdoors. So you're not going to be taking Magic Leap out into your backyard or into your front garden or walking it down the street or taking it to the park. It's not necessarily designed for that. It's designed for indoors. Um, one of the things that Alan mentioned was he said the initial product offering. They said this a number of times, which insinuates that there's going to be a lot more product offerings, that there's going to be more advanced versions of Magic Leap to come in the future, which of course is expected. I mean, who wouldn't expect that? But that also kind of insinuating that um, later devices will work in the great outdoors. And one of the things Shana D. Ellis talked about is that if you went outdoors, think about it, the technology behind Magic Leap has to analyze everything and try to figure out where the ground is, where the walls are. And that's why making it an indoor only product makes a lot more sense in the beginning because the first thing the product is going the first thing magic leap is going to do is it's going to figure out where's the floor where's the ceilings where's the walls that's the first thing that it's probably going to try to determine and if you go outside 
that's going to be a very, it needs to know where the floor is. It's going to try to determine that, but there's no walls. There's just so many variables. It is going to be ridiculous. It's kind of the same problem that we have with self-driving cars. Future versions of Magic Leap 1 or any headset that people want to design where you can walk all around, you can go to your park, you can walk anywhere, and it's going to be analyzing everything. Think of how much data it's going to have to analyze and determine, oh, there's a park bench, there's a tree, this is a gravel road, there's grass, this is dirt. I mean, it's going to have to analyze a million freaking things, just like self-driving cars are going to have to analyze. And how are you going to pack all that processing power into a regular size headset. So that is going to be something that we're really going to have to deal with. AR is pretty much going to be an indoor thing for quite some time based on that, that issue right there. Okay, another thing we heard about is they are still on target for a 2018 release. One of the things that people were talking about in chat is, is this a consumer, is this going to be a consumer product in 2018 whatsoever? Or is this 100% a developer's product in 2018? And this is one of the key questions we have. Yeah, there probably is going to be a 2018 release, maybe December of 2018. But it is, is it really going to be designed as for creators? Kind of in the same way with HoloLens. You can buy a HoloLens if you're a developer, but it's not meant for just normal consumer purchase right now. And that could be kind of the same thing that we're dealing here with Magic Leap. Although at the same time, you have these experiences like Dr. Grobort's Invaders and all of that, which look like a full feature game. You're not going to, you're not really developing full feature games for developers. So I don't know. I don't know what's exactly going on here. Is this going to be a consumer version at all in 2018 or not? Or is it going to kind of be Really, it's for developers, but consumers can buy it if they want it kind of thing. It's going to be kind of, it's probably going to be something like that. Um, let's see, what else to do? I want? Oh, yeah, and, and I wrote down here about people in chat, everybody crying about how this is the biggest scam ever, that there's no actual demos. What are the field of view? I mean, this is pretty much what everybody was yapping about in chat. And I don't know how people can still think that this is a scam. I mean, they're showing the device there. They're turning it on. They're talking about it. Come on. I mean, they can't. This is not a Ponzi scheme. This is a real product. Do you know that the country of Saudi Arabia invested in the neighborhood of like $400 million in Magic Leap? An individual country invested $400 million in Magic Leap. This is not a scam. This is not vaporware. This is a very real product, and we're starting to get real information. This is what we're starting to get. Okay, now one of the really big key pieces of information that we did find in this video is that Magic Leap 1 can do some live mapping, which is constantly updating. And this is really huge because basically the question was, is... Was it going to be a situation where you could take Magic Leap 1 and you can go into a room and Magic Leap 1 can analyze the room and then, okay, yay, now I can have experiences in this room. But if I then walk over to this other room, oh, I got to wait a couple minutes. It's got to analyze the entire room. Now I can have experiences in that room. Was it going to be a situation like that? Or was it going to be a situation where you can just walk all around and it's constantly analyzing whatever environment you're in? Now, what they did mention was is that it will have this live mapping. It will have some live mapping that is constantly updating. We don't know how good it is going to be. We don't know how effective it's going to be. But this really is mission critical because one of the things that I kind of dream about in regards to something like Magic Leap is this idea of having an experience that somebody can develop, some type of game or entertainment experience where it takes advantage of your whole entire house. So you could be in this room having an experience. You could walk over there. You're going into that room. You go into another room. You go into a bathroom and the experience can come with you wherever it's going because it's constantly analyzing every environment you're in. It's constantly searching for a floor, for a ceiling and for walls and for surfaces to place things on. 
and that's how it's going to work. We just don't know how robust this live mapping is going to be. That's really the, the crucial factor. How robust is it going to be? At least it does have some basic version of live mapping. So that is good. We just don't know how good it will actually be. Another thing we found out is there are going to be two different sizes for Magic Leap. They're going to have the standard size and they are going to have a large size. Internally, they're calling it normal and Mark Cuban size. I'm just kidding on that one, but basically that's kind of what it is. Normal size and then if you have a big gigantic OJ Simpson head or a big giant Mark Cuban head or a big Tony Robbins head, then you go for the uh, for the jumbo size. Of course, they're not going to call it jumbo. They're calling it large. But yeah, I don't know. I, I might be on the borderline there. I might need the large one. So I really shouldn't make too many jokes about that. Um, what some people asked in chat was, does Magic Leap 1 include the stand? Because in this little uh, live stream that they had, they had a table there and it was sitting on a little stand that kind of was designed. The, the light pack kind of went on the top and the Magic Leap Lightwear kind of sat, sat over there, and then you had the little controller right there. And they said, no, it does not include a stand, but that they are working on accessories, and they will have various accessories available for when this actually does release. One of the, maybe one of the biggest news uh, bulletins we got in this entire thing was local multiplayer with two Magic Leap 1s has absolutely been confirmed. Now, we don't know if there's more than two, but this is one of the big questions. One of the problems that we have in VR gaming is it's a one person deal. You know, it's a one person deal. There's no like, there's no multiplayer in VR gaming. We, we haven't had a situation where you could have a big area and you could have five or six people wearing headsets and they could all be in the same game at the same time. We don't have that in VR. Now, Magic Leap, the good news is we know that at least two, at least one other person and you can be in a shared experience, both of you having headsets on. It can recognize where the other headset is, where the other person is. You guys can both see the same experience. You can kind of point to the same things and have a shared experience. So that is really cool. The big question is how many? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? Is there a certain cap? I'm sure there's a limit. I'm sure there's a maximum number of magic leaps that can be that can occupy in the same space as each other. Hopefully it's three or four. I, I hope it's a little bit more than two, but at least we do know that local multiplayer in some way, shape, or form is there. That is incredibly good news. And then one of the last things that I've heard, I'm down here at the very bottom, one of the very last things that we heard is that on June 27th, they're going to have some type of tutorial that is going to come out, which is related to FOV mitigation, which is field of view mitigation. And basically, again, all of this is designed for developers who are making experiences for the Magic Leap 1. And so this tutorial is going to try to explain to you how to basically hide the limitations of the field of view. And so I'm hoping that if this tutorial is really going to get into that, maybe they might actually reveal the field of view, because this is something that people were debating all throughout chat, all throughout this entire live stream, everybody wondering field of view, some people saying, oh, it's going to be 40 degrees, it's going to be 80 degrees, 65 degrees, 55 degrees, you know, all kinds of different theories are being thrown out there. A lot of people just throwing stuff out there about what kind of field of view Magic Leap is going to have. This is one of the biggest shoes that have yet to drop. They're obviously, it's obviously not the best field of view in the world because they've kept it secret all this time. So I think the chances of it actually being 80 degrees, 90 degrees, maybe even 70 degrees, probably not very good. I think we're looking at maybe 55, 60 it's got to be better than HoloLens because if it's not better than HoloLens, why the hell did Saudi Arabia kick in 400 million to invest on this? So you got to feel like the, the field of view has to be relatively decent, but hopefully on June 27th with this 
field of view mitigation tutorial, hopefully we might get some more clarity on that. So basically guys, this has been a long drawn out Magic Leap special, but I thought there was a lot of interesting information that came out in this video and I thought it might be cool to kind of list all the new information that we got and kind of chew on it a little bit, think about it a little bit, uh, allow reactions for the different information that we got. I think everything looks good, honestly. Um, well, you know, one of the biggest questions of this whole thing, and the, this is what I was actually going to get into just having it as a short news story on the weekend wrap up is, oh my God, Magic Leap 1 is not the most attractive looking device. And we especially noticed this when this lady put the thing on her head. I mean, it really looks like you just see this lady sitting there with this giant thing on her head, this bug-eyed contraption that she that she has on her head, and she looks like she stepped off the set of some sci-fi movie, like she was in Starship Troopers or something, and she walked right off the set, and she's wearing some weird sci-fi contraption on her head. Not the best look. And, you know, I, I've talked about some of this before where I talk about the cosmetic appearance of something and a lot of people in comment will be like oh who cares about the freaking cosmetics man i just want to know that it looks good i don't care what it looks like well i don't really care what it looks like either when i'm in my own little room and no one's around but you know what i do care about i care about mass market adoption that's what i care about and i know that widespread ubiquitous mass market adoption is not going to come with some ugly ass thing that looks like you're a praying mantis. That's not going to happen. And this is a legitimate problem for Magic Leap. And this is where I'm going to go off on a little bit of rant right here, because ultimately I think everything is going to work out just fine for Magic Leap because it's going to be too expensive for mass market adoption anyway. So the fact that it kind of looks ugly and I mean, I can't imagine anybody looking good wearing this headset. I don't care. You could take the most beautiful person on planet Earth. You put this headset on them. It's not a good look. I don't think there's anybody on this planet that is going to look fashionable wearing a Magic Leap 1 headset. And what I'm saying here is that this is a long-term problem. Magic Leap, I'm sure they're incredibly aware of this. Uh, one thing I've heard other people say is, well, this is this is just the developer edition. This is a pro this isn't the consumer version. You're judging this like it's a consumer version. Well, it kind of sounds like they're going to be selling this to everybody out there. It's kind of a consumer version. This is their first version. This is Magic Leap 1. This is one of the main reasons they call it Magic Leap 1, because they want to let you know this is just one of many future Magic Leap products. It's going to get better and better, and hopefully it's going to get a hell of a lot sleeker and look a hell of a lot better, because again, I'm interested in this mainstream, ubiquitous, adoption from everybody out there. I want to see everybody and their mom wearing a Magic Leap headset everywhere because that will bring me that sci-fi future that I'm interested in. And while as long as it looks ugly and no one wants to go out in public wearing this thing, that is going to be a problem. The ideal scenario is the Intel Vaunt glasses where it gets to the point where the thing, no one even knows you're even wearing something. Now, I know it's going to take an incredibly long amount of time to get there, but we have to start moving towards that. And if there's any major, major negative with Magic Leap in general, I would say it's the actual looks of the device. But the good news, the really good news here is by the time this device would have a mass market price, I think by that time, it will have been iterated on enough. It'll have been redesigned enough where it will start to look a lot more sleek, a lot more, you know, uh, something that you could wear out in public and not feel like a complete weirdo that stepped off the set of Starship Troopers. I, I mean, you know, Apple is going to have their own AR headset at a certain point, And I guarantee you, Apple is very concerned about how goofy something looks or how not goofy something looks. It's very important. Marketing is important. Aesthetics are important. Cosmetic look 
is important. Not everybody is going to be using this in a basement where no one is ever going to see them. And if that's where everybody's using it, well, that is a limited segment of the population. It's not going to be ubiquitous. You're not going to get all the games and experiences that you want if only a very small number of people own these things. So it is important. I will stand by that. Go ahead, bombard me in the comments if you like about how who cares what it looks like on the outside. No, it matters. This shit matters. We want ubiquitous. We want this thing to be mass market and blow up everywhere. And the looks do matter. So anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode of VR Game Rankings, this Magic Leap 1 special. I still hope to record a very short weekend wrap-up and have it on Sunday, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. I got to edit this long, incredibly long, drawn-out video, and so we'll have to see what happens. But I'm hoping to still have some type of brief, quick banger of a weekend wrap-up, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully that will be there on Sunday. We'll have to see. That's going to do it. See everybody later. Take it easy. Later.